the earthquake in Turkey and Syria was not a punishment. In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Bestower of Mercy. The earthquake in Turkey and Syria was not a punishment. O Bidi, who asked you to make this statement? The reason behind earthquakes. Firstly, Al-Alama Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said. The people differ concerning earthquakes. Some say that it is a natural phenomenon, and it has nothing to do with religion. Others say that it by Allah's decision and pre-decree, and it has nothing to do with the sins. And others say that it is warning, and others say that it occurs as a result of the sins. The answer to this is, it may occur as a warning, a decision and pre-decree of Allah and as a result of the sins of the people. Earthquakes can occur as a warning for those who witness it and are alive. Read full article here. Some social media sermonizers amongst the Lobaida due to a desire to seek the approval of the masses made a specific statement about the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. That it was not due to sin. Indeed, it would have been enough to limit themselves to the statements of the upright scholars, such as what Al-Lama Muqbil bin Hadi, may Allah have mercy upon him, stated. Supplicate for the believers and contribute financially to fulfill the needs of those afflicted. This would have been enough instead of speaking about that which they have no knowledge. Finally, indeed, what is incumbent is that we ask Allah to include us amongst those who are thankful when blessed with something, repentant when sinful and patient when afflicted. As stated by Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, may Allah have mercy upon him, that these are the three sources of happiness. Likewise, we ask Allah to grant us the ability to worship him with love, fear and hope. Allah the Most High said, Verily, they, i.e. prophets, used to hasten on to do good deeds, and they used to call on us with hope and fear, and used to humble themselves before us. 21 hours 90 minutes O Messenger! Also mention the story of Zechariah, peace be upon him, when he prayed to his Lord, saying, O my Lord! Do not leave me alone without any children. You are the best of the living, so grant me a child that lives after me. I accepted his prayer for him, and granted him a child in John. In the process, I also cured his wife, who had been barren up until that point. Indeed, Zechariah, his wife and son were quick in doing good deeds, and would call out to me eager in my reward and fearful of my punishment. They would frequently supplicate to me. Alambaya, 90-91 Imam as Sadi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, they used to hasten towards the performance of good deeds and carried them out in the most virtuous times. They carried out those good deeds in a befitting manner and in the manner it is obligated. They never left a virtuous deed they were able to perform, rather they took the opportunity to perform it. And they used to call upon Allah with hope and fear asking Allah for those good things that are desired in the worldly life and afterlife. And they used to seek Allah's refuge from those frightening things which bring about harm in this life and the next. So they had fear and hope and they were not heedless, inattentive, and arrogant. An excerpt from Tafsir as Sadi Love as a pillar of worship is found in statement. All the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the Alamin, mankind, jinns and all that exists. All praise belongs to Allah with regards to His essence, attributes and actions, because He is the creator of everything. Everything belongs to Him, and He is the disposer of their affairs, blessing individuals specifically and humans in general. Al-Fatiha 2. That is because Allah is the bestower of all favors, or blessings, and the bestower of blessings, or favors, is loved in accordance with the favors, or blessings he bestows. And, is to praise alongside having love for the one who is praised. Hope as a pillar of worship is found in the statement. The Most Beneficent, the Most Merciful. Two names of Allah. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, derived from the word Rama, or mercy, indicating his mercy for creation, with the believers being the greatest recipients of it. al fatiha 3 That is because the believer hopes for Allah's mercy and desires its attainment. Fear as a pillar of worship is found in the statement. The only owner, and the only ruling judge, of the day of recompense, i.e. the day of resurrection. He is the master of the day of judgment the day in which we will be brought back to life and repaid for what we have done. All of his creation will be held accountable for their actions and recompensed for them. On that day God will ask, To whom belongs the kingdom today? Surah Gaffer. 16. No one, no matter how high his status, will answer, and then God will reply himself. To God, the one, the overcomer. Surah Gaffer. 16. Al-Fatiha 4. 
The day of recompense is the day of reckoning. Then the statement. We worship and obey none except you, we associate no one with you, and from you alone do we ask for help in all our affairs. All goodness is in your hand, and there is no helper except you. al Fatiha 5 You alone we worship, and you alone we ask for help, for each and everything, follows thereafter, which means, O our Lord. We worship you based on those aforementioned pillars love, hope and fear. These are the three pillars upon which is established. They have also been mentioned in Surah Al-Isra Ayah 57. Those whom they call upon, like Aisa, Jesus son of Miriam, Mary, Uzair, Ezra, Angel, etc., desire, for themselves, means of access to their Lord Allah. As to which of them should be the nearest in a Aisa, Jesus, Uzair, Ezra, Angels, etc., hope for his mercy and fear his torment. Those angels and others whom they call upon are themselves seeking good actions to bring them closer to Allah and competing to see who is closest to him by obeying him. They hope he has mercy on them and they fear his punishment. The punishment of your Lord, O Messenger, is what should be feared. And there is no town or city except I will send upon it punishment and destruction in this worldly life due to their disbelief, or afflict it with a mighty punishment such as being killed. Due to their disbelief. This destruction and punishment is a divine decree written in the preserved tablet. Al-Isra, 57-58 In the above ayah, the statement, Desire for themselves, means of access to their Lord Allah, means seeking to get close to Allah through love and doing what He loves. Then Allah stated, They, hope for His mercy and fear His torment. Therefore in this ayah, love, fear and hope are mentioned, and likewise stated in Surah al -Ambaya. Verily, they used to hasten on to do good deeds, and they used to call on us with hope and fear, and used to humble themselves before us. Therefore, a slave, i.e. the one who worships Allah alone, must combine these three pillars, love, fear and hope, in his, or her, acts of worship and remembrance of Allah. It is not permissible to worship Allah with only one of them without the others, such as worshipping Allah with love alone without fear and hope, or worshipping Allah with hope alone. Or worshipping Allah with fear alone. And due to this, some of the scholars said, Whoever worships Allah with love alone is a heretic and whoever worships Allah with fear alone is a haruri, i.e. from the courage. And whoever worships Allah with hope alone is a merji. And whoever worships Allah with love, fear and hope is a believer and person of tawhid. An excerpt from Fikal ad Ayah wal Adkar pages 99-100 to Parts 1 and 2 Al-Alama Sahih al-Fazan, may Allah preserve him, said, we should know that fear of Allah should be combined with love and hope, so that fear does not become a cause of giving up hope in Allah's mercy. A believer should have both fear of Allah and hope in Allah's mercy, so that fear alone does not lead him to give up hope in Allah's mercy, nor will hope alone make feel secure from Allah's plan. That is because giving up hope in Allah's mercy and feeling secure from Allah's plan are two affairs that negate perfect tawhid. Allah the Most High said, None feels secure from the plan of Allah except the people who are the losers. 7 hours 99 minutes If the people of the towns and cities which Allah sent his messengers to had believed in what their messengers brought them, and had been mindful of their Lord, leaving their disbelief and disobedience, and following his commands, then Allah would have opened the doors of goodness upon them in every way, but they did not believe and were not mindful of him. Instead they rejected what the prophets came with. So Allah overtook them with the punishment suddenly because of what they had earned through their sins and disobedience. So do the people who reject the truth in these cities feel safe from the punishment of Allah overcoming them in the night, while they are sleeping? Or do they feel safe from the punishment of Allah overcoming them during the day, mid-morning, while they are amusing themselves forgetfully, busy with the life of this world? Look at the blessings Allah has given them of strength and abundance, how he gave them as a means of testing them. Do these people who reject the truth among the people of these cities feel safe from Allah's plan and his faultless arrangement of things? No one feels safe from Allah's plan except the people who are lost. Yet those who are successful fear his planning. They do not become amazed and proud because of what Allah has given to them, but rather see his generosity to them and are thankful to him. al Araf 96-99 And Allah the Most High said, Certainly no one despairs of Allah's mercy, except the people who disbelieve. 12 hours 87 minutes. Their father told them to go and find out news about Joseph and his brother, 
and not to despair of relief from Allah and his release of his servants. Without doubt, only disbelieving people despair of relief from Allah and his release of his servants, because they do not know the greatness of Allah's power and his subtle favor upon his servants. Yusuf, 87 And Allah said, And who despairs of the mercy of his Lord except those who are astray? 1556 Abraham said, Does anyone despair from the mercy of his Lord but those who have deviated from Allah's straight path? al Hajjah 56 Ismail ibn Rafi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Feeling secure from Allah's plan is when the slave is persistent in committing sin, whilst hoping for Allah's forgiveness. The scholars say, Despair is to distance oneself from having hope for relief and losing hope in that, and it is the opposite of feeling secure from Allah's plan. Both these two affairs are a great sin. It is either permissible for a believer to adhere to fear alone, and thus despairs of Allah's mercy, nor should he adhere to hope alone, and thus feels secure from Allah's punishment. Rather he should have fear and hope fearful due to his sins, performs acts of obedience to Allah and hopes for Allah's mercy, just as Allah, the Most High, stated. Verily, they used to hasten on to do good deeds, and they used to call on us with hope and fear, and used to humble themselves before us. 21 hours 90 minutes and Allah said, Those whom they call upon, like Aisa, Jesus son of Miriam, Mary, Uzair, Ezra, Angel, etc., desire, for themselves, means of access to their Lord Allah. As to which of them should be the nearest in a Aisa, Jesus, Uzair, Ezra, Angels, etc., hope for his mercy and fear his torment. Verily, the torment of your Lord is something to be afraid of. 1757 when fear of Allah and hope in Allah are combined, it urges a slave, i.e. a worshipper of Allah, to perform deeds and utilize the beneficial means to that. For indeed alongside having hope in Allah's mercy, he performs acts of obedience and hopes for reward, and by way of fear, he abandons disobedience due to being fearful of Allah's punishment. But if he despairs of Allah's mercy, he may stop performing righteous deeds, and if he feels secure from Allah's punishment, he is pushed towards acts of disobedience. Al-Irshad ila sahih alaitakad waradu ala al-shirki walilhad page 85.